OpenAI recently released a preview of its new AI model, O1, and the internet has been crazy about it ever since. In this video, I will show you the four best use cases of this new AI model for finance professionals that will save you a lot of time and make your work so good that your boss won't believe it. Let's start right away with the first use case, which is using O1 to analyze sales data in your company. So here we have a file where it has all of the sales data of a SaaS company with the date of the sale, the customer ID, the product, the sales amount, and the country. If I go back to ChatGPT to explain that I am a CFO of a SaaS company, I have an Excel file with five columns, A to E, and I'm showing you the first four lines. I'm explaining also that we have data from January 22 to December 23, and I'm asking to step first to think about the analysis we could do. Second step to write write the Python code to perform this analysis. Let's see how O1 preview can help us. So first, it starts analyzing the data, then doing the analysis like I wanted, which analysis we could do, and the approach. So those are the potential analysis. And I really like how many analysis we already see. Then the step two is to write the Python code to run all of this analysis. So we have quite an extensive code, and it explains me how to run this program. So I'll copy the code. Oh paste it here and the only thing I need to change is the sales data that CSV because it's actually called SAS company and the case is really important in Python. Okay, so let's run it. I have to upload my file. And just to show you, we can get errors, but that's okay. What I will do is I will just put it back inside the chat and say, here is the error message I get. Please explain me the problem and adjust the code. So I think the problem was the date. Okay. And we had a hero problem of date, yes. Now that it's changing the code to fix the date problem, let's hope the code will be better. We see the new code and it's, re it's right really fast. <laughs> to explain me what it did. So now let's try again. I will just delete this, put a new code. And what is good as well is now it took the real new name of the file. So that's good. So we can select the file. The upload is done and now I actually have all of my analysis done. So this is not something you could get with ChatGPT 4.0 as fast. And you could see that, yes, I had a program error with date is often the case, but now I have total sales over time, total sales per product by country, top 10 customer by sales amount, distribution of sales amount, months of a month sales growth, sales by product over time, sales by country over time, the repartition between pro, basic and enterprise, also sales by country. This is a really good output that I just did in five minutes. Most importantly, I didn't give my data. Everything is done in a confidential environment, which is Google Collab, but you could do that also with Visual Studio, just with this prompt and explaining in two iterations how to change it, we solved this problem. Quite good, right? Now the second use case is something that will be extremely useful for a lot of people and not just finance professionals. I know that many of you are investing and believe it or not, the O1 model can help you with that. So let me show you how. Let's first get data because ChatGPT O1 model doesn't have access to the latest data. And if I want to invest on Tesla, I will go and grab from Yahoo Finance the latest data. So let me do a print screen here. And I will put that in the normal ChatGPT O and I will say extract data for the stock of Tesla from these screenshots. Let's get the other type of statistics. Let's see if I can get all of them in one page. Yes. So here, here is the second screenshot. Now in the ChatGPT 4.0, so the normal model, it's extracting all of this data because I don't have yet in the O1 model the possibility to input those screenshots. Okay, so now we have the data and it's going to be super useful because I can use this to put it in the O1 model. And I will ask, can you extract the historical financial information from the images as well? Now that I have my data, you need to know that there are actually some constraints 
for the prompting of ChatGPT01. And because of this, I've found a GPT that knows these constraints and improve your prompting and does it especially for the model 01. So we are going to say that write a prompt to analyze the Tesla stock. And here are the data you can use. So we are going to paste that here. Then we paste also the current data. And let's this GPT do the work of improving the prompt. So you see here that we have already a prompt that is done where there is the step by step. And that's how this model, the model 01, really likes the step by step. Maybe what I will do as well is say, add all the data in the prompt. Okay, so now it's good. We are going to have all of the data inside. Okay, now the GPT has finished with the total prompt. So let's copy all of this prompt, which has both the step-by-step -step and the data and the instructions. And now I'm going in the O1 preview and I'm going to paste this prompt and let the O1 preview do the work. We can see that start writing this investment analysis report with first analyzing the data, doing the key metrics, doing the assessment, checking on the balance sheet, especially on liquidity, leverage and cash position, stock volatility, calculating also the beta. And we have now the hold with explanation for the hold, recommendation and with a conclusion. So what we could do now as well to continue is to ask which other additional information should we collect to improve this investment report. So I ask this and so based on all of these factors, you could improve also the work you are doing with the O1 model. So if you feed the model with all of this information, you will improve this analysis. Let's be ambitious and let's try that. But to research this, we are going to use ChatGPT and I'm going to continue the discussion and say, research on internet and in your database all the most recent information you can find on the following areas and why i'm using 4o because it has access to internet while the o1 model doesn't have for now but it still has only access to internet at I will say overall level so it's not something where we are going to be able to beat investors that have access to other tools which are optimized for news and also what i would recommend if i really want to optimize this is to use the chunking method where i will request only item per item so let's say the industry benchmark will be one question then the earning projections will be another one etc etc but now i ask everything in one answer and i'm going to take this go back to my model and i will say here are the answers so let's see how it's using these answers. It's like really working with two teams that are, or two uh, assistants that have different skills. Okay, so now it's processing much faster the information. And we can see that the report improved because we added more information. Now we have the investment recommendation with the valuation concern, profitability, gross prospect, balance sheet strengths, and the position hold is now more documented thanks to this analysis. But also in the conclusion, you have some recommendation about looking after the market share and dynamics, fit margin and on technology and regulatory. Same that this training, this is only for educational purpose. But what I like is that we have already here a synthetized overview of where is the stock, the information, and also qualitative information, which will help you in your review. And you can do the same exercise with ChatGPT 4.0. What it will do less is the reasoning part to collect all of the information together and write this report. The quality is still good on ChatGPT 4.0 but the reasoning is less advanced. Next up, one of my favorite use cases of the new O1 model is using it to review complex documents. Let's see an example of reviewing accounting policies. And here is a use case of a company that is getting bought by IBM. 
So here's Ashicorp. This company needs to review the difference between their own accounting policies and the accounting policies of IBM to know what are the changes that are coming to them. Imagine if you are the CFO or the head of accounting and you have to do this task, you will probably hire a consultant, you will probably ask your team to work on it, and it will take you a few weeks until the work is done. But imagine now that you want to accelerate and have straight away an overview. We can do that with the O1 model. Let's take this challenge and see how fast we can do it. Here now I'm typing to explain that I'm working for Ashicorp and I need to compare the accounting policies with IBM. What I will do is I will go on the website of Ashicorp to grab the financial statements and the 10K where you have all of the accounting policies and I will paste it. I will do the same for IBM. So here again, I will go and grab the accounting policies that are public, so it's nothing is confidential. And then once this is done, so I copy, I will paste that again in this model. The model is already thinking about it, doing all of the steps that a team of accountants will do to review and already generating all of the analysis, going one by one through all of this policies to see the differences. But the most important, if you are a CFO or general accountant, is to have a finding summary. And this is what I'm asking now, like to present the result in a better way that I can use after. So I ask to present the result, to show me the accounting policies for Ashikor, for IBM, to tell me what is similar what is different and your interpretation and recommendation. Once this work is done, we have one by one through all of these policies, the same structure, and I can use that as my output. But also at the end, what I want is an overview of the recommendation. And so these are the overall recommendation where we see, for example, that the fiscal year is different, that Ashicorp has a fiscal year of, of January 31st and IBM December 31st, or that there are differences in capitalization of software development. So this is how you can use O1 to make a review of really detailed policies and use it to do the preliminary work for you. Similar to what you will have done if you hire a consulting company or if you get a team working for you, you will review the work to make sure that the output is correct and to make sure you understand it yourself. But now the work is pre-done for you and now you can move forward on working on these differences rather than doing all of the preliminary work. Use case number four. Imagine you are dealing with a mergers and acquisitions process. Between two companies, you are there either leading the operations or advising. And if you want to help with the financial modeling, here's how you can use OpenAI01 to do it. Let's take the example of Qualcomm that wants to buy Intel. First, what I need is to look for the information on Qualcomm and Intel. So what I will do is I will go in the normal ChatGPT 4.0 and ask for all of the information on those two companies. That's what I got here. Already the work, even though it's high level, but we have already some information. Now that I have this information, let's go in ChatGPT 01 to start performing the MA work. So what I did is imagine that you are an MA specialist on advising Qualcomm in their potential acquisition of Intel. Perform all of the steps needed for the MA. And here are the information I'm giving it to you. All of this information came from the ChatGPT 4.0. And now we are in the 01 model where I'm giving all of the information. And now the work is performed as an advisor. So we have first some qualitative information, some findings, and here some parts about the valuation, but it's quite short. You can see that as from here, it didn't help us much because it's really high level. But look at when I'm going to ask to produce the financial models for this merger and acquisition. Look first at the reasoning, taking all, all the information together, checking out the rules of financial modeling and mapping the financial modeling. Now we have those potential work that will be done. So the DCF, the corporate and the precedent transactions, so like an analyst will do. Then we'll combine the pro forma financial statements and looking at the acquisition financing structure and the synergy. Let's look first at this DCF. For Intel, we have here all of the DCF calculated with here all of the adjustments. So the DCF based valuation is 14 billion. And here I will encourage everybody to check the calculation, of course, but this is a good preliminary work. Then once this is done, we look at the multiples. 
So here for multiples, we have a totally different valuation with again some adjustment. And then for precedent transaction analysis, for now, it doesn't find some. So here maybe we could help the model by doing some research using perplexity or using other platforms that are better at researching because O1 is not really good at researching, but more at reasoning. And then we have the pro forma financial statements where we'll see the addition of Qualcomm plus Intel and the adjustment, which is really interesting. And really like it was my first shot i didn't reiterate on this i got this information straight away like this same for balance sheets and now on the financing structure we have all of this proposition and then for the synergy we have cost synergies revenue synergies with some uh, discounting uh, factor so we have the present value of the synergies and then on top we have a sensitivity analysis and some recommendation we are going after if we want to continue i think first we should check the assumptions and the calculations so to dig down really on each of these to verify that the calculation is correct but it helps us to structure our valuation and second we will really go through all of these next steps to validate our model so here is how you can simplify your work and really increase the speed of your work so this video hopefully showed you what's possible with the new O1 model of OpenAI for finance professionals. There is a lot more going into using AI to save time and become irreplaceable. And that's exactly why I created a five-day email course that teaches you everything you need to know about using AI for finance. To get this free course, just click in the first link in the description. It's completely free. And if you felt like this video was valuable, then make sure you subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next video.